today's episode of Namaste Yoga, we begin a new series on the five values and we'll focus on prana value. Hello, welcome to episode okay, so two. Here's our blanket, excellent. Asymmetrical two right now. Dropping and sinking. Uh, uh, notice how the. So just notice. Joining us for the second episode of next week. The Namaste. Hello and welcome to episode 93 of Namaste Yoga. I'm so excited to be starting a new series with you today. I know I was a little sad when we finished the Yoga Stories series, but now that I've gotten going with these teachings, I'm super excited to share them with you. And so in honor of new beginnings, I'm wearing a new Ganesh t-shirt today. Ganesh is um, the remover of obstacles and one of the Hindu deities that is fabulous to call upon when you're embarking new things, beginning new things. If you look at a lot of chanting albums of chanting that they usually start with a Ganesh chant or um, books usually start with uh, something to do with Ganesh um, so that's why remover of obstacles new beginnings and so I'm wearing this Ganesh t-shirt today which I'm really excited about I bought it in Tobermory Ontario when we were on vacation um, which is just you know kind of northern Ontario at the tip beautiful place and um, we were kind of shocked to find this fabulous little so shop there but I imagine that we probably have some viewers up in the Grey Bruce area and I'd love to hear from you. We had such a fabulous time at Sobel Beach last week and traveling in around Owen Sound and Port Elgin and Southampton and my old stomping ground of Chesley, Ontario. So thank you for sharing your space with us last week. I want to begin with a letter that I received yesterday from one of our viewers, students, participants. Her name is Jessica. And I'm going to read part of it because she wrote me a novel <laughs> and I appreciate that so much for taking the time to really let me know what it meant to her. But I'm going to just try and bring out some key points to you. Dear Melissa, words cannot express my gratitude for what you have done for me. And I just want to re reiterate, and she says you saved me, but I just really want to reiterate that it's the teachings of yoga that um, she has gratitude for and that has saved her. For the last three years, I have dealt with chronic mid-back pain and weakness and instability on the left side of my body. I went to three different doctors and two different physical therapists during the last three years. Then she goes on to describe wh what she's gone through in her healing process. However, back success aside, I still had a lot of weakness and instability on my left side, which prohibited me from being truly active like I have once been before all of this. Unfortunately, since moving to Chicago four years ago, I haven't found a teacher in Chicago that has the kind of practice I would like to do. Actually, I wasn't even sure what kind of practice that that was until I experienced your practice. Oh, we have a little friend here. <laughs> I discovered you on iTunes last November, and I thank the universe for letting me discover you. And I think this is why it's just so important to share these teachings. And if you're on Facebook or um, whatever feed you're grabbing Namaste Yoga from, do share it with your friends because that helps more people become aware of the practice. I started noticing more about my body, having more body awareness. Music to my ears. I started noticing what asanas and movements felt right and what poses didn't feel so right. I noticed how I felt day after day, um, after the day, a particular practice, whether or not I felt a little or a lot of change in my body. By the time May rolled around, I was feeling a huge change in my body. I cut down on your podcast from six times to once or twice a week. Just last week, though, I decided to go back to doing your yoga practices five or six days a week again. My body just does not feel right unless I'm doing your podcast almost every day and you know what I can totally relate unless I do yoga every day my body doesn't feel right either I honestly don't know what people do without it so what does all this mean actually you can't put a price on what you've done for me I know that the only reason my body is healed is because you offer free podcasts that I can do every day I could never afford to go to yoga six classes a week even if I could afford to go to classes like that, I don't think I would be able to find a teacher like you. I absolutely love your energy, the way you practice, and the practices you create. I think what has been key in my healing is the different types of movements you do. I can think of one movement in particular that just blew my mind. It was the podcast on Gomukhasana. The movement was a cat-cow pose with 
to the side with Gomukhasana legs. And thanks for bringing that up because I felt over the last few weeks, my creativity has really been centered around asanas more than um, the teachings and philosophy. So I'm glad that that worked. I don't think that any amount of physical therapy, massage, or anything else out there could have had the same effect on me as your practices have. There had, this part is adorable. There have been many times during the last six months when I've been in the middle of doing an everyday activity or I'm driving down the road or in legs up the wall and I just start crying and feel so thankful. Thankful for you, for yoga and for my persistence and the wonder of technology. I've literally screamed, thank you, Melissa, while driving down the road. I'm thankful for you, your openness, generosity, kindness, and true talent that you share with the world. Thank you for the existence of a practice like yoga that helps to provide insight into your body and mind. Me too. Thankful for my persistence and not giving up like so many people do, and I completely understand. And last but not least, I'm thankful for the technology that brought you and me together. I'm still working on healing my body and increasing my strength on the left side, but I never would have made it this far without you. Um, she talks about um, following her dharma. Right now, I'm unemployed and looking for a nursing assistant job on my way to becoming a registered nurse. But once I have a job, you can expect me to give a monthly donation. I will never be able to afford to pay you what you deserve. I will give you what I can to support you in your effort to follow your dharma because you have a gift for teaching yoga, and we are so lucky and blessed that you share it with the world. Thank you again, for, Melissa, for all you do. You have healed, helped my body, mind, and spirit, and I truly appreciate and cherish you. Sincerely, with much love and gratitude, Jessica. So thank you, Jessica. This just meant so much to me and it truly touched me and I so appreciate it and I just love to hear these personal accounts of how yoga is affecting you in your life so do feel free to friend us on Facebook like us on Facebook or send me an email at info at melissawest.com and you can always go to melissawest.com and send us a comment that way okay enough of that I have some new donators that I want to thank but I'll leave that for next week because I want to get on to the teachings today so why don't you go ahead and rest back lie down on your back and give yourself a chance to settle in begin to feel your body lying on the ground feel your breath and let your thoughts turn inward to your own experience right now. We're going to begin a new series about the five values and this has everything to do with the movement. Become, we'll become aware of movement energy in your body and as we become more attentive to this prana or vital life force we can enhance and direct its flows. We will begin with pranavayu. Pranavayu has to do with inward and upward movement in your body, starting at your heart center, moving up to through your head, like a bouquet of flowers reaching out. And this vayu has to do with everything that you take into your body. So as you rest back here, become aware of your inhalation and draw in deep breaths. Draw in that vital life force energy, breathing into your heart center. And sometimes we direct breath flow down in yoga, and there is a place for that. But it, today, as we practice, I want you to think about directing your breath up, breathing into your heart center, expanding out into your chest, up, let it surround your head. So pranavayu is responsible for inhalation. It governs intake. It's a very inspiring practice. If you think about inhalation as being inspiration, you can see why this is possible. It has to do with the upward flow of prana. So become aware of that upward flow as you draw breath into your body. You'll feel it stimulate your head and your mind. You'll feel it expand your heart and your chest. Feel your breath nourish your brain and your eyes. Pranavayu uh, governs the reception of all things. So we become aware and conscious and mindful about what we allow to come into our energy field. What sights we take in, 
what sounds, how, what food we take in, our breath, the company we keep, the energy that surrounds us based on the company we keep, the words that we read. Anything that you take in has to do with prana vayu. And so we become aware and conscious of that. So t- taking in all these teachings now, just see what sort of things come to mind for you and how this relates to you personally. And then begin to create an intention for your practice today. How would you like to work with prana vayu? Why are you practicing today? How can this practice best serve you in your life right now? And begin to set an intention. My intention is that this practice will inspire you, it will energize you, and it will open your heart, and it will energize your mind. So staying resting back on the ground, we're going to focus a lot on breath today and we're going to use a breath practice called three-part breathing. So we're going to breathe in in three parts with our breath and with our body. So you'll inhale, bring your arms up about a third of the way. Inhale up a little bit more, about two-thirds of the way. Inhale fully, bring your arms all the way overhead and then exhale down and around. So the focus here is on your inhalation and also on the movement in your body that accentuates this pranavayu. Inhale, 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 and exhale. And really draw your breath in. Focus on what it's like to draw breath in and up in your body. How that makes your heart feel. How that makes your spirit feel. How that makes your mind feel. How you feel emotionally, energetically. Great, and then you'll keep your knees bent, roll to your side and come up onto all fours. Okay, so on all fours, going to do cat pose. So with cat pose, we're going to focus on cultivating prana vayu, enhancing prana vayu in our body really focusing on the inhalation and the inward and upward movement in this. So spread your fingers nice and wide. We worked on that a couple of weeks ago. Your exhale, round up through your back, lean back. Inhale, keep your elbows in tight to your body. Open your heart to the ground and come forward. So exhale, round back. And I want you, as we do cat pose here, to really focus on this upward movement here. I'm really drawing breath in. Feel your breath coming into your chest.
Okay, then come back center. And we're going to do a variation on thread the needle. So you're going to inhale, open up. And I want your focus to be on this part of the movement because this would be enhancing pranavayu. And then exhale, rotate through. And we're going to keep it dynamic. Inhale, up. Exhale, rotate. Follow the full length of your inhalation and the full length of your exhalation. Come back center, we've got, wow, that's a huge family of geese going by there. <laughs> wow, okay, we've got lots of people at class today. <laughs> Look at all of them. How many do you think there are, Tim? 30, you counted 30? 30 people came to Namaste Yoga at Lake Ontario today. <laughs> Not people, 30 geese. <laughs> okay, let's do the other side. We'll inhale, open up your right side. And exhale, rotate through. Focus on that inward and upward movement of And then come back center. Let's lie down on the ground. And we're going to enhance pranavayu in our body by doing cobra building, what I like to call cobra building. Well, let's do a little windshield wipers for our lower back first. Um, this one, let's not get into performance anxiety on this one, like how high we go. Instead, let's really follow our breath and the flow of energy in our body. Keep your lower back long and just come up as far as what is happening for you today naturally without effort. Remember, ease and steadiness in our postures, okay? No pinching in your low back. Let's just keep this about the movement of your spine and pranavayu and working within your own limitations and letting go of outcome. So bring your hands underneath your shoulders, roll your shoulders back and up. Your elbows are in tight to your body, forearms are off the ground elbows pointing back. Press the front of your pelvis into the ground. Keep your low back long. I also like to lengthen my low back by tucking my toes under and lifting my knees. That opens up the front of my hips a little bit more. It creates more length. I love that. Okay, we'll inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Okay, we did eight for abundance, the abundance of energy. Come up and back and rest into child's pose. Okay. 
So we work for eight breaths. We need to rest for at least eight breaths. I know, um, I don't know, I seem to have spend more time and effort than relaxation and I'm really in my own practice working on keeping my counter poses as long as my poses to give my body time to recover. Okay, come up onto all fours again. Inhale here. Let's just do cat again. Walk to your side though to do cat. Exhale round. Inhale, extend. Focus on your inhalation. And let's walk to the other side. Same thing, exhale round, inhale, extend. So focus on your upper spine, your thoracic spine, the part of your spine that's connected to your rib cage, your cervical spine through your neck up into your head. Okay, come back center. We're going to do another dynamic flow of postures between downward facing dog and upward facing dog. So when I do this, I want you to focus on my pelvis because all the movement in this one comes from your pelvis and pelvic tilting, tucking your tail under. So we'll start in downward facing dog and maybe you want to stretch out your legs a little bit. I would take a little bit longer downward uh, longer stance than you probably usually do in downward facing dog. So watch my pelvis here. You tuck your tail under, reach your sit bones forward, your pubic bone forwards, and that action starts to move your spine upwards. And then in upward facing dog, your legs are off the ground. You're on your toes here like this. Okay, you're going to stay in upward facing dog for a few breaths and I'm going to come off my knees so I can explain what I want you to focus on. I want you to, when you're in that upward facing dog, focus on taking some breaths and feeling it move up, that prana vayu, enhancing that energy flow with your breath. Okay, so let's work with that for a little bit. Take a break in child's pose when you need to. Spread your fingers nice and wide. So I'm going to breathe in, breathe out round, tail tucks under, pause, breathe in. Really breathe in. Here is really important to have your fingers spread wide so there's not too much flexion in your wrist. So spread them even wider so you can reach out into the webs of your hands. Okay, then let's take a break. Child's pose, stretch out your low back. Do a little side bend in child's pose too. Here, this is really a space that I feel like you wanna be focusing on breathing into and opening up for pranavayu. Think about moving your rib cage, the ribs, apart like an accordion. And the other side as well. Okay. 
Okay, so let's come up to seated. I'm gonna take a little water break. I would encourage you to do the same. So this is part of taking into your body. So I'm taking in water to nourish and hydrate my body. Great for my cells, great for my whole body. Here. <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to do the four movements of your neck. So sitting up nice and tall, and you may want to place a cushion here so that your spine is able to be taller and your knees below your hips. Let's roll our shoulders back and down, be long through our spine, and drop your ear to your shoulder. While you're doing this, continue to focus on your inhalation, which will enhance that prana value. And drop your ear to the other side. Bring your head center, turn it to one side. And the other. And circle your head around in front. And bring your head back center and just close your eyes and I want you to become aware of energy movement in your body. Now this, as a teacher, this way of talking about things, I've always shied away from because I think it's um, not very concrete and sometimes students sort of think like, what the heck am I talking about? But let me explain to you what I mean by that and what I feel in my body when, I've, when I'm thinking about focusing my awareness that way. So if I'm paying attention to pranavayu here and trying to notice energy flow, I'm noticing my body from my heart center up, chest, shoulders, neck, head, and even the space around my body here. I'm becoming aware of the energy flow in that area and again that's kind of abstract so I'm noticing how my breath moves in that way space how uh, I feel movement because of my breath in that space um, I get a sense of spaciousness in this area that isn't necessarily happening from here down because I haven't focused on my energy and enhancing the movement from here down um, that's the way I feel it I feel it's really spacious and free feels that way to me. So just see what it feels like in your body. There's no right or wrong way, just what you're experiencing in this moment. So now we're going to do some eye yoga. Uh, this, uh, the eyes have a lot to do with pranavayu, as you can imagine, because they're a major way that you take things into your body through your sense of sight. And we do need to bring mindfulness and awareness to this uh, in terms of what we're taking in the media that we watch and take in the books that we read. Um, doing yoga in a beautiful place like this and being in nature, that is a, a great way to nourish and enhance uh, pranavayu through our eyes. 
Okay, so eye yoga, the way it works, you do do it with your eyes open, but between each one, we'll close our eyes and we'll do it with breath. So for example, with the first one, start with your eyes closed. Take a deep breath in. Sigh it out. <sighs> open your eyes. You're going to inhale, keep your head still, look up, and exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and exhale it out. And just check in, notice what's happening with your shoulders, your teeth, your jaw. So I notice when I do eye yoga, my shoulders like to get tight and somehow that's going to help my eye yoga. Or places relaxed in your body. Okay, open your eyes. Let's inhale, look to the left. Exhale, look to the right. Remember to continue to focus on your inhalation. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth. <sighs> Open your eyes now. We'll inhale to the right. Exhale to the left. Focus on your breath in. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth. <sighs> Open your eyes. We're going to so inhale, circle up clockwise. Exhale as you circle down and around. This one I find really interesting because my eyes want to go woo -woo 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 really fast. And it's a real challenge for me to slow it down with my breath. So it'll be interesting to see how you experience this one. I'm getting better at it though. Let's close our eyes, take a deep breath in. Side out. And open your eyes. We'll do the same thing counterclockwise. Inhale up. Exhale down and around. Oh, there's a butterfly on my mat. It was harder counterclockwise. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Side out. So I can actually improve your vision. It can. Um, I used to wear eyeglasses for to see. Um, I never had really bad eyes, but I did wear glasses to see at a distance, and I, I don't anymore. I actually did have an eye test in my. Um, when the optometrist did the eye test, they were shocked that my eyes had improved. They could, couldn't figure out how. <laughs> but it was, it was from doing eye yoga and building the strength of my eyes. So you can absolutely do that. Oh, so I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention, when you do eye yoga, if you do wear eyeglasses, it's better to take your glasses off when you do it. So if you do this again, do it without your eyeglasses. Okay, before we come to standing, we're going to do one more posture. You're going to need to be sideways on your mat. Take your right leg out to the side with your toes pointing forward. 
Okay, first thing we're going to do is reach your left arm straight up. And I want you to let this movement be a way to enhance pranavayu. So we have all different layers of our body, our physical body, our energetic body, our emotional body, our spiritual body, all different layers of our body, the five koshas, we've done classes on those. So when we move our physical body, it affects all the other layers of our body. So reach this arm up and let that enhanced pranavayu reach up through your fingertips. Feel aliveness in your hands. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Let this lifting move each rib apart like an accordion. Inhale up and exhale. Side bend over your right leg. Keep your heart open and focus on your inhalation. Come back to center. Let's switch sides. Take your left leg out to the side, toes facing forward, even off your hips. Check your pelvis too, make sure it's level. If your pelvis was a bowl, would you be spilling water at the front? Keep your water contained in your pelvic bowl. Okay, same thing on this side. Inhale, focus on reaching up, aliveness in your hands. Your arm reaching up can pull your ribs apart, enhancing that flow of movement here. And exhale, side bend. Open your heart. Come back center and make your way up to standing. Let's do breath of joy to really enhance the flow of pranavayu. You'll inhale, bring your arms in front. It's another three part breath. Inhale a little bit more, arms out to the side. Inhale overhead and that just totally encompasses whew, pranavayu. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale, fold forward, bend your knees and uh, take your arms behind you. So it's inhale, 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 exhale. Great, okay. Let's um, inhale, roll your shoulders up, exhale them down and around. And then interlace your hands behind you, roll your shoulders back and down, lift and open your chest. Great. And now to enhance pranavaya, we're going to do cow's face arms. And when we do this, I want you to focus on this movement of um, feel the stretch in your body here, feel your edges here, feel your breath move up this way, okay? So internally rotate your left arm and bring it up your back. And then bring your right arm up and over. Maybe fingertips meet, maybe not. It doesn't really matter. We, we, you could get a strap if you want to, but we're only doing this. But if you're here, just stay here. It's probably fine. Okay, bring your elbow back. Keep your chest lifted, your tail tucked. Focus on your inhalation.
and then release this and shake it out a little bit let's do your right arm so internally rotate your right shoulder bring your arm up your back inhale bring your left arm up and over reach up bring your tips come down at the meet great if not no big deal wherever you are is perfect today so honor and love your body for what it is capable of doing not what it's not capable of doing I guarantee it will open up for you faster that way Focus on your breath in, breathing in. Really draw that vital life force energy into you. Okay, and release that. We're gonna, going to work with side angle pose, Parjvakanasana. So stand at the front of your mat. Take a generous, generous step back with your left foot. Okay, turn your hips so they face the long edge of your mat. Men line up heel to arch, women line up heel to heel. It has to do with your hips. Women have wider hips. Bend your front right knee. Make sure it's rolled out over your second and third toes. Just like we did in gate pose, inhale, reach your left arm up. Let that lift pull your ribs apart like an accordion. Feel that upward movement and then exhale and side bend over your right leg. Okay, so we've been working a bit with the wraps in this pose too. So you can stay here. You want to maintain the integrity of the side bend when you do this. So you could take your hand down to the inside of your leg. And in fact, that's how the wrap begins. Then you can wrap your right arm around your back and bring your hands together. So I'll turn around maybe so you can see what that looks like from behind. So right arm to the inside of your leg, wrap it around and open up. Okay, and then <laughs> take your feet wide and forward fold. One up slowly, not like me. Come up slowly. Turn your right toes in and your left toe forward to the other side of your mat. Hips face the long edge of your mat. Bend your front left knee. Reach your right arm up. Lengthen up. Create that prana vayu, that space for breath and energy to move. Exhale, side bend over your left leg. And then you can play with the wraps. Take your left arm down, wrap it around, hold on to your hands behind you. Great, that's hard, <laughs> that's hard for me. I'm working on that, I just started working on that. It was neat, I've been, um, really inspired by Anna Forrest and thinking about challenging myself a little bit more in my practice and so <laughs> that's that's a start for me for challenging myself a little bit more okay let's come down you're gonna lie on your back we're going to do fish pose this one you want to be careful of your neck if you have any neck injuries although there's no weight bearing on the neck it's just that the neck will be um, extended so 
pay attention to your own body and do what's right for you. You're going to tuck your arms underneath your legs. And this would be a great modification. You've already got a little bit of a back bend here. Press into your elbows, lift your chest, and come on to the top of your head. Breathe into your heart center, up into your shoulders. Ooh, there's a friend traveling up my arm. Let me come out and try that again. Feel the opening in your throat and feel your brain being bathed with blood. Great to enhance the flow of prana by you. Release this pose from your body. Hug your knees into your chest. Take in the sound of the crickets. Okay, let's um, make our way up to seating, seated. Either rock yourself up or roll to your side. Sit with your legs straight out in front of you. Bend your left leg and open it out to the side. I keep getting up too fast. <laughs> Lengthen up through your spine. Take your right hand to the outside of your left leg. Lengthen up. Breathe up. Take the energy inwards and upwards. From here, reach your left arm up. Decompress your rib cage. Exhale, side bend over your right leg. Come on up, release, come back center, release your left leg, bend your right leg, open your right leg out to the side, lengthen up through your spine. Take your left hand to the outside of your right knee, right hand to the base of your spine, lengthen up. Inhale, reach your right arm up. Decompress through your rib cage, side bend over your left leg. Inhale and come up and come back to center. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us for episode 93 of namaste yoga please do rest back and do shavasana there's more i'd like to say to close this practice particularly around mindfulness of what you take into your energetic field and i'd really love to write a blog entry on this but it is summertime and my time in front of the computer is far less than it is in the winter months, trying to get out and take in as much of the sun as I can during the eight short weeks we get it here in Ontario and Canada. So um, I will though, at some point, I, I really do wanna write um, some meditation and blog around this, but please do rest back, 
be mindful of what you got out of this practice and how you will take it out into the world. Thank you for joining us for episode 93 of Namaste Yoga. Namaste. Namaste.